was made it made these commercials. Oh. There's like one with a French girl, one with a doctor, and one with a mom complaining about her kids. Hmm. And every time one of these, if, if you ever wonder like what my type of like what my taste in women is, just watch one of those Lumi commercials, and you'll pretty much get the idea. Like, oh, okay, hmm. Andrew, like, okay. Hey, uh, I guess? Yeah, I don't know what that was, but we're back. <laughs> but, uh, one of my favorite lines from the, uh, commercials is, basically it's a deodorant you can put wherever you want, and it prevents odor instead of just masking odor. Hmm. Um, it's a natural deodorant, but it doesn't have baking soda, so there's no rashes. Um, we got some. It works. It, it really actually works. Um, but, like, one of the lines in one of the commercials is, put it anywhere that starts with a P. The pits, the privates, the puffit, the pubud, and the enus. <laughs> The fucking, like, loser when she says the anus. Like, god damn it. Uh, but yeah, it works. Um, I wouldn't go with the spruce, personally, because it's... It doesn't smell sprucey so much as, like, pesto. Which, the smell kind of goes away after a while, but you still feel, like, weird rubbing what feel, smells like pesto under your arms. Yeah. But we bought, like, the Father's Day pack to test all of it, so there's, like, juniper berry scent, no scent, and the spruce. And the juniper berry's pretty good. The no scent is scent-free, you know? Um, so yeah, it's pretty good stuff, uh, but it's just like a weird series of commercials from the people who make the shitting unicorns. Mm -hmm. Man, we... It's re they really make you work for anything at this point in the fucking game. Like every single jiggy. Early on, it's like it's the tiniest thing, and you can get a bunch. But now it's like I have to do so much shit just to get one. Uh, that sucks. Just trying to finish this. Thing. At this point. I do notice that um, uh, Russell Talk didn't put up a video today. Hmm. Kind of interesting. Because Sundays, usually on Sundays, Adam Blompier posts. Mm -hmm. And so Adam Blompier was very fun to watch when he was at Black Culture. He's fun to watch today. And when he first came to Wrestle Talk, I was very uncomfortable watching him. Mm -hmm. But again, I trust Ollie, Luke, Thor, and everyone there to make a decision. Plus, Adam had done the right thing, because a couple years ago when Cultaholic started and he left what culture to join with them, he made an announcement saying, you know, I abused a position of celebrity, as minor as it is, to lie to women and say that I was in an open relationship and get uh, pics from them. I am the asshole here, they are the victims, please do not, you know, take it out on them. Right. I am not going to join Cultaholic right now. I am going to go into rehab, I'm going to do the right thing. And for the past couple of years, that's what he's been doing is, you know, he was in rehab, he uh, hasn't been in the public eye, and then earlier this year he came back to Wrestle Talk. So, I was uncomfortable at first, like, I don't know, like, when it was a one-off video, I was like, okay, well, fine. And then, when he was announced as a full-time member, I was like, I don't know about this, but I trust them to have known more about his private life and what he's done in the intermeeting time, and they are people I thoroughly trust to make the right decisions here. So, I've been watching, and on Sundays, he usually posts a video uh, of the sort of content he used to do at 
what culture. Hmm. It's not posted today because uh, I don't know that this is because people pointed out his past uh, problems and they addressed him uh, fr yesterday. But this is one of those things where I was like, I wonder if they did that for damage control. Like, what with everything going on, what, it would be a little tone deaf to have him upload today. Yeah, certainly. And I would, been, I would have been a lot more comfortable if I had known that, like, well, in the past, you know, couple years, he's also been doing charity work. He's been donating to causes, you know, something, right? Right. Instead of just, well, he's been out of the public eye, he went to rehab, and that was it. I don't know if he has or hasn't. It's none of my business. What he does, uh, yeah. But, like I said, I trust the guys there to make the right decision. Right. And he genuinely seems like he's come across as a better guy for it all and a lot more humbled because of it but you know it's kind of like uh, and Joey Ryan like that's Joey Ryan is the biggest disappointment in all this in my opinion yeah um, and people are like you saw that get like don't blame his gimmick like there are plenty of people who have sexualized gimmicks who aren't shitty people. Yeah. Don't don't go playing that card. That's a step away from Victor from demonizing sex workers. Like the kind of person who would say anybody that would have someone touch their dick is a horrible person. Like just the just because he did turn out to be a horrible person doesn't mean that it was reflected in his gimmick. Yeah, it wasn't a foregone conclusion. Right. Um, yeah. Um, there are plenty of things, like, anyway. Looks like uh, Coco shared another tweet with us. Let me pull it up. Content or content or food. I love mozzarella, but what are you supposed to do with these little white balls after you're done drinking them? After drinking it. This bothers me. It's a container of mozzarella balls with the fluid drained. Saying, what do you do with the weird white balls after you're done drinking it? Ooh. I can't even begin to imagine the sodium levels. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of that's a lot of swole. Why is Adam Driver is over trending? What did he do? Projecting. When he was younger, he joined the Marines to fight terrorism. The fact that everyone's equating Muslims to terrorists is your own fucking Islamophobia. Mm, yeah. Um. Someone's saying, as a Muslim, can y'all stop doing this every couple of months so y'all can use this as props for your Star Wars discourse? Y'all did it days before Ramadan, too. Just, like, shut the fuck up and eat your food. Yeah. Yeah. And somebody's like, he said the N-word in a movie. He was playing a part. Yeah. The part of... 
someone, I presume they're talking about Black Klansmen, someone, yeah, someone fucking getting one over on the KKK. I'm just gonna say, if you're in a Spike Lee movie, I feel like he, of all people, definitely recognizes when it is and is not appropriate to use that word. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's one thing I couldn't do. Like, if a script called, like, if I were in something and a script called for me to use that, I'd be supremely uncomfortable doing that. Like, oh yeah, it hasn't gotten to that point, but I've had scripts that 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 toe the line, and it's it's real uncomfortable, and I pretty much it's always a no. As soon as it starts getting like stereotypical, starts using yeah. some some real racial language. Do a funny accent for this one, you know, like. Meh. Oh, it's it's always the street accent that they are looking for, or they're just like, you can play this character. And it's like that that character is black. That's not. I'm not gonna play them. It's like no, it's okay because it's not actually like, it's not like a realistic black person. It's like that doesn't make me feel any better. That, that makes it worse. Makes it a lot worse, bud. The one I remember, uh, friend was telling me about, he got offered a role for something, and they said, we want you to do an accent. He's like, okay, uh, British, Irish? And they're like, you know, like, a 7-Eleven a, a accent. Mm, no. And he was like, he immediately knew what they meant. He was like, I don't understand. Can you elaborate on that? They're like, you know, like an accent somebody working at 7-Eleven would have. He's like, I don't think I follow. Like Brooklyn, like yo, would you need some cigarettes? He's like, I'm like no, 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 more. You know, like what you hear from the average 7-Eleven worker, and he's just like not giving it to them. Yeah. And they're just like, <sighs> like the guy from. You know, The Simpsons. And he started doing a Chief Wiggum impression. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah, he just made them supremely uncomfortable until they realized, oh, we have made a mistake here. This yeah, as is soon not... as you guys want to stop being racist, then, then we can talk. Neutral American accents is one over two. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Hi, welcome to 7-Eleven. How can I help you today? Yep, 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 yep. I had, uh... I had a customer come in when I worked for Family Dollar. And I'm just like, welcome to Family Dollar, how can I help? Like, I would mess with people at Family Dollar. I'm shocked I didn't get fired sooner. Mm. I worked for that company for like two and a half or three years or something like that. I am so shocked I never got fired from that job sooner. Because I would just start doing like... Anything I could to irritate people. Mm -hmm. If they were assholes. But I only did it, like, if they are. Like, if you were a decent customer, I was a decent customer to you. If you were an asshole customer, that's when I would start being an asshole to you. And I would do it in a way that you knew I was doing it, I knew I was doing it. Anybody outside watching would know I was doing it, but they couldn't. Really I like, prove. 1 over 2 says, nah, that's, that's too cheery. Yeah, exactly. You gotta... You gotta pull some soul out of that one. Yeah, exactly. You gotta... Welcome to Family Dollar. How can I help you today? And they're like... I'm sorry, sir. We don't have that product. And they'd be like... Don't give me that fucking attitude. Sir, I'm unaware what attitude you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's so fucking good. And, uh... One time... This guy had been given... Like, you could tell the wife was just at her like, end of a rope for the day. This guy just pushed her buttons all fucking day and was just pissing her off. Right. And, like, every time she did something in the store, he'd be like, hand me that over there. No, the one next to it. Mm. And I was like, this guy's gonna get it. If he gives me a setup, he's gonna get it. And the god smiled on me. He was like, he gets to the register and we're checking out. I have no chance to, like, get him yet. And he just stops and he looks and he's like, You look familiar. Have I seen you somewhere before? I was like, I used to do game porn. And his wife loses it. And he's suddenly like, You don't look familiar no more. 
boy, his wife is like, are you sure? Look again. And I'm like, you know, normally. <laughs> it was, uh, he, he shuffled out right quick. And his wife just kind of gave me this little look like, mm -hmm, thank you. So. Uh, here's a, a wrestling kind of name and gimmick that I've only seen the guy wrestle once, but it kind of is the kind of gimmick that could just go away now from what I've seen. Maybe I'm wrong. No. Maybe I'm wrong. But it's the kind of thing where you're like, it is 2020. This kind of gimmick should have died 20 years ago. Right. Like, the, the, it's Congo Kong. Oh. A guy who, like, paints his face up like war paint and comes out and, like, mm. eh, kind of a Kamala or Papa Shango type thing that I... Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I need to watch more Impact to find out what that gimmick more is, but... Uh, also, he's one of the, uh, people who's had allegations about him, so. Ah, uh, of course. Uh, his response to the allegations by, uh, he was accused by an independent wrestler of abuse on social media. Right. He has since stated... We live in a different society than when I started in this business, and back then it wasn't uncommon to rape rookies. I certainly didn't intend for it to hurt you at all, let alone as bad as it did. I sincerely apologize for hurting you so bad. Our relationship since then, and up till now, gave no indication there was any animosity between us, as it was all hugs and smiles that I knew of. We've even worked together since then, at my request, and you were taken care of during said matches. If I had any clue you felt like that, then I definitely would have squashed it then. As I told you, all of you young ones, I only pick on people I like and see something in. Again, never my intention to hurt or scar you by any means, and I sincerely apologize. I hope we can hash this out between us like adults. Hmm. That was a mature response up until that last line. It's when you throw out that, I hope we can handle this like adults. Yeah, implying, implying that adults... Or that the other person is acting irrationally, as yeah. a child would. And like... Mm -hmm. It was just, it was just simple fun. Didn't mean anything by it. No, no. You don't get to play that card, bud. You are not nope. in the position to play that card. No. No. It was a mostly, like, standard, but fairly respectable and mature thing to say up until that last line, then it just tainted everyone else. Or everything yeah. else. Uh, so, so a guy... So, Matt Schlapp. Real name, Matt Schlapp. Alright. Really bumped my mom and sister and nephew, canceled their trip to the Tulsa rally at the last minute due to all the concerns of violence. Clearly, good people are worried about safety. It's beyond time for America to think about who will reestablish security in our neighborhoods. What? Yeah. But... Uh, yeah, all that violence that was threatened. A bunch of kids bought the fucking tickets, schlap. Which, by the way, well, is they the didn't sound even... your face makes when you talk. I found out <laughs> they didn't even buy the tickets, because that would be kind of bad if, like, they were still giving money to the Trump campaign. No, the tickets were free. You just had to text, and they'd give you a free ticket, so, yeah, it got spammed. Like, it obviously was gonna, as anyone with a fucking brain and any sense of how the internet works would have been able to tell you. <laughs> yeah, uh, apparently a bunch of teens and TikTokers and things like that just, like, reserved all the tickets. Yep, a bunch of K-pop Did you see the stands. final result? Did you see the final result of how many they, they, they had in Oh, it went up into the millions, right? No, no, in attendance. Like, oh, actually right. Showed up. Like 10k at most. No. Six. What? Six k. Ooh. Meaning that Pink outsold the president at that venue. Well, I mean, Pink Parker. is just a better act in general. Yeah. But like, uh, Parker Malloy tweet, 
tweeted, this fucking guy, also if you're worried about safety, it's because the Fox News Fear Channel is constantly telling people about Antifa, ooh, is out to get them. This fucking moron, what a piece of shit. I was gonna say, yeah, one also thought you meant, uh, just six, total. No, no, no. <laughs> Which I was gonna say, I, th I think it was a little more than that from the pictures, but... Still a pretty yeah. small crowd. They set up an outdoor stage. Yup, for, for runoff. <laughs> Definitely needed that. <laughs> I saw, like, uh, one person tweeting that, uh, like, there was a lot of people theorizing that, uh, Parscale would get fired because of this. Mm -hmm. And somebody was tweeting, he, like, everyone was like, by the end of the week, he'll be fired. And one person was like, he's been fired already. Oh my god, I haven't mm -hmm. seen any verification of that. Right. But wouldn't it be, f wouldn't it be nice? Did oh. you see the picture of Trump yeah. getting home and getting off a of Marine one? No. Oh, he looked livid. He looked like he had just gotten told that he couldn't have cake tonight. Yeah, that, I mean, that sounds like him. It doesn't matter what it is. Fucking, he'll go off, and this is like an actual thing to be somewhat upset about. A statue of Teddy Roosevelt will be removed from New York's Museum of Natural History. Hmm. I'm not sure I understand. Yeah, I mean, given the time frame, like... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Teddy Roosevelt is sitting on a horse, flanked by a black man and a Native American man on foot. Ooh. Yeah, that's not uh, great. His grandson, or his great grandson, Theodore the Fourth, supports the decision. The composition well. of the equestrian statue does not reflect my great great or my great grandfather's legacy. It's time to remove the statue and move forward. Yeah. Yeah, because this, the more we test, the more it's revealed that he's been fucking up. He doesn't want to admit it, so the longer he can go without it, any proof, the better for him. And, like, do you remember way early on the cruise ship full of patients? Mm -hmm. And he didn't want to let them dock in Los Angeles because then our case numbers would go up to uh, 600. He was worried about the numbers getting as high as 600. Uh, cases. Yep. And he didn't want to let them dock because then the numbers would go up and to quote him, on video our numbers will go up and we didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, right. Even though he and Congress knew in July, so, January. so long before they like were going to tell anybody. And they just, it's just insider trading. And they're st they're getting away with it. They're not getting prosecuted at all for fucking full-on just insider trading. Attendance at Trump's rally was 6,200, the Tulsa Fire Department says. Hmm. Uh, th that's pretty spot on. Yeah. Mysterious deaths raise questions about how early coronavirus hit California. Judge rejects Trump administration's efforts to block the release of John Bolton's book. And, like, 
Trump claimed it as a victory when he lost in court over that. Yeah. Because there was like some small thing like, yeah, we'll give you the money from it though. Like, we can't block the book, it's out now. So, uh, we, uh, it was something like they get the money from the book instead of John Bolton. I don't. Like, okay. Finally, Trump will have some money, because I doubt he's got the money he claims he does. Oh no, it's all uh, dead. Is all 100% dead because he just used his fucking dad's name to leverage uh, loans from banks that were like, we don't want to give this to you. And he just fucking strong armed them until they're finally like, fuck, fine, get the fuck out of our face. Yes, sure. And then it was revealed, yeah, he didn't have any of that fucking money. And then he would sue them for implying that he didn't have the money that he was not paying. Mm -hmm. Viral photo highlights the problem with public spaces. So, here's the thing. Stay the fuck home. Yes. Wear your fucking mask. Yes. Uh, don't think that, oh, if I eat outside, it'll be fine. No. No. There's no need no. for it. I get it. It sucks. It sucks being home all day. I understand. Don't do it. It's, your life is not worth your boredom. Yeah. Be bored for a few more weeks, be good, and it'll be over soon enough. The longer people don't fucking listen, the longer it's gonna take. And the thing is, if we had just done it to begin with, if we had just done the two weeks, we could have killed it. Yep. Would have been perfectly record. fine. We could have nipped it in the bud, they say. That's the term. Now we're gonna die. Yep. Uh, Florida records over 4,000 new cases in one day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they, d they just fully fucking reopen everything. Just because, because, of uh, the businesses are failing. Those businesses uh, were no. gonna fail regardless. Do you know who started it? Hmm. Of course it was Vince McMahon. Oh, of fucking course it was Vince McMahon. He wants live audiences back now. He, he is pissed that he can't have SummerSlam in Boston like he originally planned. He is fucking livid, so he's probably going to have it in Florida, and they're going to let him have fans. So he is rolling out a four-phase plan to bring them in uh, as soon as possible. And he is going to get people killed so that he can look good. I, fu I fucking hate him. And like... For, and here's the one thing I will credit WWE over AEW for. Uh, yeah, the live audiences should absolutely be brought back last one over two. Uh, when accusations were made against one of WWE's talent, they just fired him. Jack Gallagher, fired. Jordan Devlin, they're uh, investigating. Uh, but they immediately fired Jack Gallagher. And... No comment on why. Just we have come to the terms, and they even didn't. They didn't even include the. Uh, we wish him all the best in future endeavors. Line. He's yeah. just gone. Yeah, he's gone. AEW was like, we'll decide after rehab, and we're not going to comment on Justin Roberts at all. Like, mm. no, no. Just have a spine. I understand. Like, th this is a tough situation to be in, Tony. I get it. And Tony, I get you seem like a really nice guy and you don't want to do things that will, like, cause someone pain. And, like, I understand. I really, really understand. It, it, it's hard. You have to do the right thing and fire Justin Roberts publicly. Yep. It's, the, it's the same reason I walked away from Modern Rogue. Because Brian didn't do the right thing publicly. Yeah. I will still watch the Modern Rogue show on YouTube. I will still read the website, you know, every now and then. Yeah, and don't... you you need the money a hell of a lot more than Tony Khan needs the money that he's not going to lose because he'll just get Dasha or he'll get fucking somebody else to do the fucking yeah. announcements. Yeah, and Dasha was doing really good. Oh, yeah, I, I, I miss Justin's sound, but, like, now uh, I could not care. And... Like, there was that guy they had on, was it BTE, or was it uh, one of the Road 2s, where they had a fan come in and do it? And Shit, I, I don't think I saw that one. 
Oh, it was great. He had won like a... He had won a thing. I think it was a Road 2. And they brought in a fan who wanted to do announcing for wrestling. And so they had him, you know, just make something up for his favorite wrestlers, the Young Bucks. And he fucking nails it. Just like this great intro. And even Dustin was like, you should... Like, people were telling him, you should seriously see about, you know, finding a little... Oh, wait. Hey, I think I remember that. That might have been on BTE. No, it was a Road 2. No, I think about it. Because it was shot in that, like, sports documentary style that the Road 2s are. And, right. like, that's how I know it was sincere, that they were like, you actually should look into that, because he was good. So there's plenty of talent. I get using an established name makes it more comfortable and, you know, draws a bigger crowd. Right. But your whole thing in AEW is supposed to be about building new stars. Do that with the, do it with the announced team. Yeah, why not? Because, like, Justin's been around. Yeah. Um, did you know Justin initially cost Daniel Bryan his job in WWE? Really? When they debuted the Nexus, which Daniel Bryan was a part of, they were told backstage, destroy the ring, destroy the tables, destroy you know, the announce tables, destroy everything, attack Justin. So, they said attack Justin. Daniel Bryan went out there and hung Ju or hanged Justin by his necktie. Mm. Off the side of the ring. Right. Classic spot. Yeah. And Justin was not apparently warned that they were going to attack him. Oh no. And so he was livid. And, you know, complained about it. So they fired uh, Daniel Bryan for a while. And then immediately, like, brought him back not long after. That's, that's hard. Yeah. So... They fucked up, and then it just shit rolls downhill. Yeah. Uh. Okay, let's check this, this guy. I have a description right here in front of my face, and it's not taking me to the fucking guy. I gotta, I gotta hit him with the egg. Yeah. Through here. Apparently, it's International Yoga Day. Oh. Okay. Like, I have nothing against yoga, I just... One of my friends is actually a yoga instructor. I am not good at it, because I am not flexible. Uh, it's cool, though. Like, I have... Like I said, I have nothing against it. It's just not for me. I, uh, studied martial arts, actually, for years. I don't even know how long. And I wound up getting, like... I wound up, you know, ranking black belt. Mm. And winning tournaments, actually. Wow, I, I also, didn't know that. I also, yeah, I also got us banned from a tournament. Oh no! I was I was told to, but I did. Okay. Um. So there's different kinds of tournaments. Right. There's if you, like in the Karate Kid, that was an open tournament. Right. That is where anybody from any style can come and perform and compete. The problem is, in order to make it even half fair to everybody, they put so many rules on it that you can barely do anything. Yeah, even in that, like, they're, they're just going off for, like, a full minute explaining the rules. Yeah, and so oh, there's things like no contact with the face, which is pretty universal. No drawing blood, no going to the floor, your hands can't touch the floor, etc, etc, etc. Which, for our style, was fine, but for everyone else who was doing, like, the flippy stuff, it's not. Mm -hmm. And so, they, you know, had to limit it even further and say, oh, all you need is contact. It doesn't have to be an actual, like, punch to count, it just has to be contact to get the point. So if my hand just touches your rib, it's a point. If my hand touches your stomach, it's a point. If my foot touches you, it's a point. But it can't be your arms, your legs, or, you know, specifically your arms and legs. 
If I hit your head, but not the face. And if I hit your ribs or stomach, but not the spine, eh, it's fine. And I can't reach across your body. So like, if your left side is facing me, I cannot hit your right side. Sure. Which is a weird one. And it's one I've never understood. I guess but, to try and limit the momentum? What momentum? Because you're reaching across a person. Like, I would think that the side closest to me is more dangerous. Right. But the point is, it, they just throw so many rules out there that you're literally just tapping somebody and giving, you know, being told, you're sick of the fighter, yeah! And so it got to a point where one of the rules was no shots to the face, no drawing blood. If you do that, you immediately lose and your opponent wins. So, one of my classmates got hit directly in the face and started bleeding from the mouth. Oof. And they did nothing about it. Oh, like, great. they let the match continue. And so, the, my sensei looked over at me and told me what happened. It's like, just get disqualified. We're, we're, we want out of here. Do whatever you can to piss these people off. Use excessive force. Throw these people. Do whatever you want. No rules. Oh, man. The rules. The rules do not apply to you right now. So I said, okay. And I beat the shit out of every single guy in my division. And they did nothing. They did nothing about it. They just let me wail on these guys who were... Like, so... To give an example of why this was uh, cruel, you have to wear safety gear. This is true of all tournaments. Head gear, hand gear, foot gear, preferably mouth gear or cup and shin guards. Mm -hmm. They will test for that, and if you don't have it, that's on you. But you have to have the hand and foot gear, and specifically head gear. So, I'm like, fuck it. I'm just gonna knock that. You know, and I never knew there was other safety gear. This guy gets, him, like, every guy in my division had a chest guard and a face guard, like a face shield of plastic. Mm. And I'm just looking at them like, are you serious right now? If I didn't have to wear this, I wouldn't have the headgear on. I would have the hand gear and the foot gear, and that'd be it. I, would, I don't like the rest, because it does nothing. It does not help at all. Right. And so these guys are like, damn, you're looking like Roman Reigns in the ring. I'm like, all right, time to time to fucking wreck shit. I just started pounding the ribs. I pounded the ribs. I kicked them. I threw them to the ground. I did everything I could to take these guys out. And I was trying to get disqualified, and I won the division. Wow. And then, it, yeah, then a judge came at the end and was like, uh. You win the division, but you are not invited back. Yep. <laughs> like, Disqualified. Oh, no. Yeah, you are banned after this. I'm like, oh no. Oh, please let me go again. No. It, it was kind of like, what's that bit the Game Grumps did where uh, Dan had walked up behind one of their friends and like smacked him on the ass, and the friend was like, oh no. We don't have an HR department. I can't do anything. What? <laughs> you never heard that bit? No. <laughs> it's one of the like guys that's not on camera. Uh, Dan just like snuck up by him one day and smacked him on the ass. And apparently this is a thing that like had been established. Like this was not an out of the blue like harassment thing. Uh, it was part of their friendship. And the guy just goes, Oh no, we don't have an HR department. I can't do anything. <laughs> and fucking Dan just lost it. Um, it reminds me of that. Or, um, like, man, it sucks that, like, the one phrase you could really use to uh, get across how not upset I am about being banned from an open tournament forever is Ooh. a super racist Disney movie phrase. Uh... Mm-hmm. Uh? 
Uh, I'll, I'll Facebook it too, because... Does it start with a Z? The Z? No. Mm -hmm. No, it's... Hmm. I'm thinking of a, a different one then. I mean, Super Races, I immediately think Song of the South. It's from Song of the South. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, that's the perfect phrase for it, because it's the fucking, like, Oh, please, don't give me the thing I am hoping you'll give me. That would be unfortunate. Yeah. It is such a perfect, like, phrase for it. And it's the perfect shorthand, and it's from the most racist fucking movie yeah. <sighs> since Birth of a Nation. Yep, at least it's not as violent as Birth of a Nation. Mm. But that's not saying much. It really isn't. Did you ever see Black Klansman, by the way? <laughs> it. Uh, I mean, it was Spike Lee, so, you know, subtlety was not really involved. But uh, it was it was pretty solid, and it did actually make reference to the fact that uh, Birth of a Nation actively made people more violently racist. In a, in a really good Harry Belafonte uh, cameo. Yeah. Uh, I didn't even know he was still alive, to be honest. But. Kentucky cutting number of polling places for Tuesday's primary from 3,700 to 200. Wow. There will be one polling place for 600 or 616,000 registered voters in Jefferson County, where we half the states. Work. We can't do mail-in ballots. That'd be you could rig that. There's no way that you could rig live polling by I don't know making it harder to do so. Making it more difficult to vote. Uh, that county, by the way, is where half the state's black voters live. Of course it is. Because that's when they do that shit. Every time. Like, I... We went through Stacey Abrams' fucking campaign trying to get voted as governor and it just being completely rigged. Oh, but Trump's not going to say shit that about that because the, the guy he liked got got fucking voted in. Well, no, the guy running the election is the guy that was running in the election. Exactly, yeah. And Chapel. that's, it's, it's so clearly crooked, but Trump doesn't care about that rigging because it worked out the way he likes. Or how about right here in North Carolina in my backyard, literally, in our backyard, the mail-in voter fraud that the Republicans pulled off. And like every and the fact that Trump uh, committed voter fraud himself. Yeah. Like he fucking uh, falsified documents on his voter registration card. Yeah, and I mean, not for nothing, but Russia absolutely helped him in that election. The only thing that yeah. saved him is that he was too incompetent to know. Uh. Patagonia announces they will no longer advertise on Facebook, so they're joining the Stop Hate for Profit campaign. Good. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. Fuck yeah. Mark Zuckerberg and all of Facebook. <sighs> the call immediately drops out. <laughs> well, no, this is Amazon. Is it? Yeah, Twitch is owned by Amazon. Yeah. Well, I meant like we're on, we're calling on Facebook Messenger. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, I I prefer Discord. They seem somewhat cooler, but also, like, it's it's a lot more they, than most people need. And they also uh, facilitate racism a lot more. That's true. Well, I, uh, between Facebook and Discord, I yeah, feel like the, it's pretty even, honestly. Yes, but on Facebook, it's, you know, on public groups, at least, whereas on Discord, you have to either find an invitation or be invited. That's true. That's very true. Uh, 90s kids are apparently nostalgic for the Pizza Hut dining experience. Pizza Hut dining uh, experience? I don't fucking know. How is it different from current? Oh my gosh. 
somebody's mocking that trend, like that's trending on Twitter. Somebody's mocking that by showing uh, reboot toys you could have gotten at Pizza Hut. Mm. And saying, I refuse to eat a Pizza Hut unless I receive a frisket toy and a YTV pod canister with my thin and crispy crust pepperoni pizza. I had to wait two hours for a 16 year old with a rough review here to prepare. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, the good old days, right? Do you remember being a kid, like this might have been before your time, where you could go to Little Caesars, and if you were a kid and you were like, and you said their fucking catchphrase, they would give you a toy? Like, you didn't pay for it, you just got a toy? I actually never went to Little Caesars until I was a, a senior in high school. Oh, uh, we would go and I would be like, pizza, pizza, and they'd fucking give you like a, a, a yellow rubber slice of pizza that squirted water. <laughs> nice. And it was the fucking greatest thing, um, ever. Let's see, what's the last jiggy here? Did that one. January 2020 me and June 2020 me are two very different people. Yeah. Uh, Man, no one so could have predicted how bad 2020 would be. USA Today uh, posted, when he noticed the flag holder was broken, he knew what he had to do, and it shows like security camera footage of a cop fixing an American flag's holder. And somebody said, funny how the cameras seem to work when the cops do this, but when they murder someone like Andres Guadado, who was only 18 years old, suddenly the cameras don't work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was like some reform about the cameras where it was like, uh, the, they'll be punished if they turn their camera off, but they're allowed to in like these like 30 different instances, and it's like, for fuck's sake, dude. Just stream it all to a fuck, like, the technology is there to stream it all to a single cloud. It doesn't have to be live streamed necessarily. Like, it doesn't have to be visible by the public, but anything that doesn't contain sensitive information like, in someone's license. Instance, yeah. Any instance in which a cop clearly turns off his camera, immediately fired, no matter what the reason was. Yeah. Period. Also, uh, somebody tweeted, name a character that went through more pain than her. I'll wait and shoot the girl from uh, Last of Us. Mm -hmm. And Sammy Guevara says, me every Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. That boy gets beat up. Somebody shared a picture of Piccolo with Happy Father's Day. Oh my god, that was a good one. <sighs> Did I, uh, happy Father's Day unless you're a fucking creep. Yeah. Did you see the accusations against Jeff Ross? No, what? Uh, pretty much some of the same stuff. Mm. Somebody said judging a book by its cover should never be this accurate. So, let the, just let that be the answer. Ooh. Yeah. Um. Oh, shit. <laughs> Cass tweeted a picture, uh, retweeted Warhorse sitting in front of a massive bonfire. Mm -hmm. To which Warhorse posted the tweet with I am the Lord of Flame and Hellfire. Like, this fire is bigger than he is. Sure. <laughs> and Orange Cassidy just replied with, Look at Warhorse. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, like, did the Elmo fuck hell me and redrew it as Warhorse. Nice. <laughs> Have you seen uh, him and Danhausen make a tag team entrance together yet? I haven't seen their entrance. I've seen them do some other stuff. When they make their entrance, uh, the announcer will say, Weighing in at six, six, six pounds. <laughs> nice. Two. Oh my gosh. Whoever at Satan's Jacuzzi has shared a tweet hmm. uh, January to June and went from looking like someone you'd see like running the books at a company or like behind the counter at McDonald's or something to looking like you know what, I'll just share the tweet because oof. Oh, fuck. How am I supposed to do like a trick here? 
Yeah. All the pictures are great. That's all I'm saying. It's just the most pictures are wonderful. Some great pictures. Man, I wonderful. have I have given up trying to remember how to do this shit. Let me just look this January up. to June, age to be ten years. Oh my goodness. Some of the like whoa. people are posting pictures of themselves in January and June. And you're just like, whoa. Wait the difference in appearance for some people is just staggering. Mm hmm I kind of wish I had taken pictures. Like, I wish I changed whatsoever. Like, the thread going down is great. It's, it's Oh, there's impressive. a thread. Hold on, hold on. Well, like, if you look at the first pic or first tweet and then click the second tweet and then click... Like, they, uh, they're, they're quote tweet, the quote tweet thread. Oh, I see. Uh, the media doesn't want you to see this. Bitch, I don't want to see this. <laughs> Three kids. It's like an African-American family at a Trump rally. Hmm. And, like, the kids are looking like they would rather be anywhere else while the parents in the background are like, mm-hmm, this is what it's all about. Yeah, and, I look completely unchanged, too. Yeah. Like, I'm fat and bald. I was fat and bald at the beginning of the year. I'm fat and bald now. Happy question mark day to Matt Gates. That's a good one. Oh, that's a good one, Jess Dweck. Uh, I don't need a call to send text I regret. <laughs> okay, so I gotta go through here. Grab these, go through that. Protest <laughs> Jeff Bezos has decided he will not end world hunger today. <laughs> There's an entire... Oh, Coco says she's blonde now. Yes, fat and blonde now, so... Eh. I refuse to call anyone else fat simply because of, like, the hurt it's caused people over the years. Well, yeah, so, but if they're calling themselves fat, like... Even then, I won't do it. Fair it's, enough. It's like, it's like, no, nah, man, it's okay if you say the N-word with me. Like, no, it's not. It's really not okay to say it. Like, you can make fun of yourself, and that's it. Like, you can use words that hurt you alone to describe yourself, and that's it. I don't use it to describe nobody else unless it's Trump. In which case, I call him a fucking idiot. Yeah. Uh, lobsters have an unusual way of communicating. And instead of making noises or gestures, they squirt pee at each other. They have two bladders that are located either side of the head, just under their eyes. They have small urine release nozzles, which they use to squirt the substance at each other. The squirted urine contains a chemical message that can communicate various things, including simple recognition, aggression, and attraction. So Trump probably really loves lobster. Oh, most certainly. Somebody tweeted, imagining an episode of uh, Lobster Seinfeld where George releases the recognition pee and not the attraction pee and it's mad at himself. <laughs> Can I be honest? I hate Seinfeld. I mean, fair enough. Like, they're meant to be shitty people, and if that's not funny to you, then I I can understand not enjoying it. Wait, I just never thought it was funny. Like, I've had friends who would talk about it in school. Like, I was in fifth grade when it was, you know, huge. And they would talk about, it, like, yo, you should watch that. You watch Seinfeld? I'm like, no. They're like, you should watch it. And I'm like, alright, fine. So then I watched watch it, it, and it's. Uh... It was awful. Like, I kept waiting for it to be funny, and maybe it's because, like, when where I went to school was a bunch of white kids, and I preferred shows like, I don't know, Will Smith's Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Martin Lawrence's uh, Martin, uh, Living Single, um, it's just like, I, I'm trying to think of, like, all the sitcoms I watched growing up, those are, like, the most, like, mostly those, but, like, I hate it. Like, I absolutely hated Seinfeld. I hated Friends. Uh, oh, the Friends Drew Carey sucks. Show. 
And honestly, like Seinfeld, if you go back to it, a lot of it is like really kind of elitist, just like, look at us, white professionals in New York, ooh, and it's like, okay. I, I think the only sitcom with a predominantly white cast I liked was the Drew Carey show. Mm -hmm. No, Roseanne. I like Roseanne. Basically, like, the two working class ones versus... We're all somehow living in the nicest houses you've ever seen or the nicest apartments you've ever seen. And our jobs are very... nebulous. Like... Yeah, the fact that... Uh, um... Jerry's like he was just a stand-up and he was supposed to be a not like like a failing stand-up and they still were like B but he's got this like full New York apartment that probably costs like uh f like three grand a month at least yeah like considering that Voltaire's like 10 by 9 apartment costs him like 2200 a month and that was like a few years ago the price has probably gone up on that by this point and it sucks, you know. And yeah, you know, my thing being like, I never like watched those ones. I was like, oh yeah, this is fun. Like Roseanne's dance, or you know, holds up the original run. Yeah. The the last season sucked, and then you get to uh. The reboot. And that completely missed the point. Oh, most certainly. Which is bizarre considering that, I mean, it was most of the same cast, right? Well, it was Roseanne. And uh. she went off the deep end in the intervening years. Right. And so killing her off the show was absolutely the right idea. And bringing it back as the Connors. Right. And, and that show. I highly recommend it. Like, if you have a chance to watch The Connors, hmm, okay. it's really good. Um, you really, honestly, could mostly uh, skip the season before The Connors of the rebirth of Roseanne. Uh, like, some of it you kind of need to know. Right. But you could just get, like, a Cliff Notes on it. Yeah, or just like look up the Wikipedia for the first whatever season get to get the plot. Yeah, and like the problem I had is Roseanne forgot her own character in that time. Mm -hmm. In the original series, she in one of I've talked about this before. I don't know if it was on one of your streams or not. But uh, I don't think you've talked about it on these streams yet. No. So. In the original series, she there was an episode in which she loses her temper and spanked DJ, her son, mm -hmm. and she cries her eyes out over it. She apologizes to him and explains that when she and her sister were little, her father was physically abusive, and she didn't ever want to be like that. Right. And, you know, she asked if he could ever forgive her. And he's like, yeah, mom, I forgive you. And you never see them use corporal punishment or physical punishment again in the entire series. Right. Ever. Not once. No matter what they did. And they would, you know, explain, I'm very disappointed in you, you're grounded. They would yell a lot, you know, but they never, ever hit the kids again. Then comes the reboot series. Mm -hmm. And th this is played four laughs, I should point out. Roseanne uh, gets angry at her granddaughter and fucking waterboards her in the kitchen sink. For lulls. Like, it's played as a joke that her, you know, granddaughter gets waterboarded in the kitchen sink. And uh, Darlene walks in and is like, what are you doing? Stop! And, like, stops her from doing more. And Roseanne, like, makes a snarky comment, like, oh, it was just, well, uh, like, it's a joke. Yeah. And I was like, you fucking missed the whole point of the series. You fucking, like, do, like, and then 
she went on her racist Twitter tirade, which... Yeah. God. Man, it claimed... Oh, I was on Ambien. Like... And what? It oh, was she was fucking... the one who did the Ambien? Yeah. Yeah, she blamed Ambien for her racist tweets. As always, like, don't say that it was chemical inhibition, because guess what? You know what you do on chemical inhibition? The Sweet. things that you want actually think. The things yeah. you've been holding back the rest of the time. For instance, when I get high, what do I do? I look at you and say, mm, I got the munchies and you're looking like a snack. Mm -hmm. And I'm so sad that you didn't laugh at that joke the first time I told it. You just stared at me like, what? That was the best joke I've ever told. And you just stared at me. It hurt my feelings. Whatever you say, dude. You don't remember that? Oh, I remember. You know, hurt my feelings. That, that was fucking comedy gold. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Whereas uh, MSNBC asks artist and actor LL Cool J the, about racism, and somebody says, why is a major news outlet asking a rapper about racism with all the qualified black folk that are available to discuss that further proof y'all don't actually want to discuss racism? No, you they're asking. lip service. Yeah, there are people, actual historians they could be talking to. Yeah. And it's I like, mean, uh, granted, at least they're asking an actual black person, but like, it's, and, there are people who actually know what's going on. And if you're going to ask a musician about it, that's Tom Morello. Mm -hmm. Seriously, he's a Harvard uh, educated. Yeah, you know, ask him. There was that one, like, college humor sketch that was just like, your friend who's doing the same thing as you, but just hitting it so much better. Uh-huh. Yeah. I see it, and I'm just like, why? What am I doing wrong? And the re reality is that I'm not doing bullshit, like, comic dubs and nonsense that everybody fucking loves. And that I gets you I need further context for this tweet. For everyone asking, the protesters begged the cops for the legs back. Cops refused. Then a group rushed the cops, getting maced, and were able to grab the legs back and get them back to the kid. I need some fucking context. I presume that kid, uh, has, uh... Oh my god. Prosthetics. Today in Columbus, my husband was downtown at the protest and saw the cops hit and mace an unarmed kid and then steal his prosthetic legs. Under what grounds would that ever be considered appropriate? I don't know, was the kid, like, making fun of him? Because otherwise... Yeah, like... There's that ban on, like, chokeholds, and, like, a couple days later cops were using it again anyway. Of course they were. Because it didn't fucking matter to them. <sighs> And every one of those protesters who went and got the legs back, fucking hero. And every one of those cops is a Every cop at the protest is a So the chokeholds thing is why we're saying defund and not reform, because reform, they're just gonna uh, fucking ignore it, like they ignore every other goddamn thing. I, they need I, to I, not have money because then they will actually think about their fucking actions. Money is the only thing that will actually get people to pay attention in this fucking society. I am, uh, absolutely an abolitionist at this point. Mm, yeah, same. Just, we don't need them. Get... But then again, what would we do about the black bears? <sighs> Bruh. Let them be. Bear's just a big old fluffy doggo. So, like, you would think that the joke I made was the obvious low-hanging fruit joke. Mm -hmm. And so you can always tell what the obvious joke actually is by checking the comments. Yeah. On any store, or on any tweet. Sure. And so I'll tell you this. Apparently, I'm the only one who thought of that joke. What do you think the obvious joke was? Like, what joke do you think everybody went for? Because uh, it's not. Mine. Let me think. 
Stealing legs. Le no, 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 I'm talking about the uh, the bear running bear. wild. Right. Uh, the, the bear in the uh, 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 parking lot. And the guy was like, but by all means, let's defund the police. Let's see a social worker handle this. So what do you think the obvious joke hmm. uh, and reply to that guy was? Because it wasn't my joke of, you only want a cop involved because it's a black bear. Right. Which is the obvious joke. Like that... But what do you think the joke everybody went for was? Fuck, I don't know. That does sound like the obvious joke to me. And I think it's because you and I do comedy for a living. Sam and Maddie. Uh, she was like, maybe it's because we just do comedy all the time that that was the joke that we all three came up with. Because mm -hmm. everyone else was like, what are they going to arrest him for? Stealing too many picnic baskets? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. that one's not even good. Like, the like everything you needed was in the guy's original tweet. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I think about this shit, I just get angrier and angrier. Oh, it's, it's hard not to. It's such absurdity on yeah, I'm every just damn level. You know, I'm just saying. The cops that killed Breonna Taylor, I've heard that they're awfully suicidal and I hear there are trees in his yard. Mm. Just, you know, like all those... Uh, black guys who totally just committed suicide over the past couple months or mm -hmm. past couple weeks. You know, I was just saying, I, I hear his mental health isn't the best after he murdered someone in her sleep. Yeah, I mean, that'll, that'll take a toll on you. Yeah, and I'm sure his front yard has a tree. Just saying, I mean, I'm, I'm not advocating anything. I'm, I'm just saying words. Advocate? No. I, I, if anything, I would want, you know... That's like one of my favorite TikTok trends is people... Is people giving advice on how to basically vandalize shit safely. But being like, if you... If you wanted to make sure that you didn't pop someone's tires, that you didn't slash tires... Just remember, uh, if you don't want to slash tires, make sure you don't do it while they're inflated because then they can burst and harm you when you don't do it. So make sure that you let some air out first so that they're not as pressurized even when better, you don't, don't do it. Even better, don't slash the tires. Just let the air out. Mm -hmm. And if, if you, you know, are not slashing tires, just remember, when you don't slash the tires, don't slash all four. Because then insurance will cover it. Just yeah. slash three. But don't don't actually slash the three tires. And make sure and make sure that you document it in case, you know, for some reason they might want to try and slash the others to get get by insurance, you know, and claim that all four were slashed. If you were to not do this. Well that's assuming they're smart enough to know that. <laughs> It doesn't- it only takes one other fucking cop. They- they swarm together like the roaches they are. Actually, you know what's even better to do if you want to avoid the fourth one getting slashed? Mm. Uh... Fill it with slime. Mm. That like, uh, I forget the brand of it, but it's like this goop that you spray into a tire when it's flat and it, you know, it both inflates and, uh, seals the hole. Right. It's not- but it's only good for getting you to... Yeah, like 50 end. miles. Yeah, and even then, you really don't want to use it if you can avoid it. Oh yeah, because it's good. It's, the tire's fucked then. The really cruel thing to do is if you can get to it, pop the, uh, the spare. Mm. That's the cruel one. Yeah. A lot of edgy comics are actually just raving comics. I guess it's easier than writing. Yeah. I mean, Cameron Esposito uh, had the whole thing about that. She has a whole special about uh, rape humor and just how awful it is. And, like, her thesis is effectively, 
A bad comic will just say, rape, and then people will laugh out of discomfort, and then th that comic will think, ah, I am funny and should continue to do this tactic that I have come up with. Shock, yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah. So there's a Facebook group called I'm White and I'm Proud of It, with 57 members. Without the, the, the just slightly skirting around the specific wording of what they are. Oh, no, uh, the, the top post on it is, I've collected enough racist crap here for the group. I'm in that outs racist. It is currently being forwarded to your employees. I even noticed some active military, which is extremely disappointing as a veteran. Those are being forwarded to your commands, and you expect your discharges to be forthcoming. I hope you all have fun waiting in the unemployment line. Peace. <laughs> you are a hero. Damn. Fuck, I do have to actually do the puzzle. <sighs> uh, uh, I am set up to do the final fight here, but I gotta, I gotta go do this puzzle to open it up. So, using four colors to make a painting that looks as if it was shot from a camera, and it's just screen printing. Mm. Like, I'm like, uh, that's how screen printing works. Yeah, like, it's always interesting seeing people, um... Like, discover obvious things, or things that you and I would have known already right. for the first time. Right. That was actually something, um, the editor for, uh, Scientific American, he had... It wasn't a TED Talk, it was, uh, uh, The Story Collider, which is Brian Wecht and one of his friends. It's their, like, show that they would do and record. It's a podcast, and it's just, like, people in the science community doing their own stories of their personal lives and stuff and their relationship with science. Um, and Brian actually has a couple that he's done for the show that are really, really good. Um, but one is from, yeah, the guy for Scientific American. And he talked about what he called crazy mail, which is that people would send him these, these like, crackpot theories and stuff where they they would just freak out and they're like, I've figured out how gravity actually works and how we can break it and have anti-gravity. And him being an actual educated scientist would be like, uh, no, that's not gonna work. Um, and so he, like, for the most part, like, most of it would be like, they, they found, figured out on their own just like the basics of field theory or something. And so it's so revolutionary for their level that they, freaked out and thought they'd unlock the universe. Um, the, the conclusion to that story being, at one point the FBI contacted him and said, hey, uh, we realized the Unabomber sent you something and it might, uh, it might contain something dangerous in this cubic foot of mail that he'd been collecting for years. So, uh, the thing that got me, it, like, fucking killed me, Hmm. was uh, I accidentally invent stuff that already exists sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I invented boiling one time. <laughs> How did you do this? Uh, so we had frozen hot dogs and I was like, I need to thaw these. Because they stick together, right? Yeah. So you gotta like separate them. You most people do like the, the butter knife method where they just jab between and stab a hot nah, dog or not. You're gonna break the casing, they won't have that snap. So, what do you do? You run them under hot water to separate them. Mm -hmm. I was doing that and I thought, man, I wonder why nobody's ever thought to do this, like, to cook with really hot water. Mm. And mm, here's the thing. I didn't mean to cook the food in the water. I meant, like, to make a grill through which scalding hot water was piped through, uh... Oh. Like, instead of solid pieces of metal, it would have been pipes laid out. Thin pipes, like, uh, the metal straws you can buy. Sure. And then they would be piping scalding hot water through that would actually do the cooking. Okay. And, like, that was my idea. Like, that was my, like, revolutionary Coach D's dog dogs. <laughs> what? That's what 1 over 2 just said. That's Coach, Coach Oh! 
Coach Z from okay. Homestar Runner. I don't, I don't, I don't think I ever watched, saw that one. I've never seen Homestar Runner. Uh, Strong Bad emails are fun. I, I haven't watched a ton of, a ton of it, but I do recognize how important it, it was to like the development of internet comedy as it stands today. Song dogs. Song dogs. <laughs> apparently, uh, they uh, apparently uh, had to correct themselves right. with song dogs. I, again, I don't know. I'm start running. Um, Coach it, D's dog dogs. You know what? You can coach D's nuts. So the um, there was a a web comic. I don't remember what it was, but it just had something that effectively be a tweet today. And it was just like, I was sitting in my office, like, spacing out, and I suddenly had this brilliant idea, um, of how to, of how you could, like, reinforce cardboard by, like, folding it and, like, layering it on top of itself. And I did it, that for a while, and then I realized I just invented corrugated cardboard. <laughs> Corrugation, yeah. Yeah. I had, uh, another moment like that one time. I've, I've done that a lot of times, honestly. I have had so many instances where I'm just like, yeah. I mean, if I've, you're thinking long enough, yeah, it's, stuff is just gonna slowly work its way out the same way it did for the people who originally thought it up. What, may, what really makes me mad is, like, if I need a specific kind of tool or something, mm. I will, like, think, okay, I need to build my own version of this tool because it's so hyper specific and. So, like, eh, right? Yeah. Like how Adam Savage, like, half of the time, the part of the process is just making a tool to do the next step. Right. And, like, you and I did it together the other day, where we're like, all right, I'm going to build Iggy uh, a custom thing that will hold her phone for her while she's yeah, during the streams. Yeah. And it will, you know, take a... And then we looked on Walmart, and the exact thing we were going to build was, like, $15. And we were looking at, like... A fifty dollar material bill. <laughs> yeah. And we're like, oh. Never exactly. Mind. And I just, I just used a fucking mic stand, basically, which is a little bit of a pain. It would be nice to have one that's like a boom arm, that I wouldn't have I, to, to set up and take down every, every time I stream. But I have something interesting you might want. Hmm. It's designed to hold a phone, but it loops around your neck, and you can like also use it on your desk or whatever hmm. so that you can like just have it like kind of where you can bend it into different positions wherever you want it right and it just kind of sits around your neck a little padded thing where you can put it on a desk or a table or you know whatever and it just holds your phone for you hmm. okay so i'll bring that down and you can the main thing out. is it's not just a uh it's not just that I need it to be held up so that I can see this phone, but I also need to hold it up in position to the mic so that they can hear you. Right. So... I'm sure you can figure it out, but I'll bring it. You can take a look at it. Sure. Um, for no reason whatsoever, a threat of Elizabeth... <laughs> for no reason whatsoever, a threat of Elizabeth Warren rallies with crowds larger than 6,000. Mm. <laughs> uh, like, I don't... Elizabeth Warren, she was in my top two. Yeah, um, she, I, I would have accepted Elizabeth Warren. What bothered me about Elizabeth was how the minute she dropped out, she was just like, and I am like, fuck everybody until, you know, Bernie yeah. drops out. It would have been... everything I said I care about. Yeah, it w it, if she had just endorsed Bernie, it, it would have helped so much, but no. She and just had to fit, let everybody assume what she was going to think. And what bothered me the most about it was all the people saying, Elizabeth Warren doesn't owe you anything. She's a fucking elected official. She is a she public owes you official. She many things. That is her job, is to owe you things. Like, that is... You don't take a position of public authority without owing the people that you, that you work for. Everything. Like... Mm -hmm. Yes, she does owe us. That is, I, I would say the same thing of Bernie if it was him and not her, and he was pulling that shit. But he wouldn't, because he's, like, one of the few decent politicians we have. And, you know, fucking... 
people trying to play it off as sexism. Like, no, I wanted her in the vice president seat with Bernie or vice versa. Bernie is her vice president. Yeah, but she preemptively, get... she preemptively started to feud with him before it was even, like, time. Time. No. Yeah. Like, they should have worked together to get Biden out of there. And then Kamala Harris saying, like, oh... Uh, I called Biden a racist during the debates, made him look like a racist during the debates, but that was a debate. That doesn't... I, I support him now. Yeah, people need to quit being so very, like, competitive in these fucking debates. They need to, like, actually work together and recognize that they're on the same team, just with different viewpoints. Why does that have to be a fucking competition? Well, then there's somebody like Biden who is a different team. Yeah, he's... Clearly, uh, what was it? Somebody was like, he's the best closet Republican we've ever had. Yeah. Jo Cody Johnson keeps insisting that Biden should primary Trump. Yeah. And, like, I agree. He's not going to do it. Like, no, because he knows he'll lose. Well, would he, though? Uh, probably. Because the Republicans really like him, too. That's why he's leading in the polls right now. I don't know. I feel like it's gonna be fucking rigged and shit again. It's gonna be fucking. It's gonna get hacked, and they're gonna fucking deny it, and then they're gonna fucking claim that the other side was hacking. It's gonna be the same bullshit all over again. <sighs> it's frustrating. You know what game is? You know what game is fun that you should check out if you haven't, hmm. or or if you haven't, you should get it. What? Um, Silence. Silence. It's got a, a Wizard of Oz kind of vibe to it. Okay. It's pretty good. What's the uh, what kind of gameplay is it? Um. I don't know how to describe it. It's kind of like a Sierra game, but a simplified Sierra game. Okay. Oh, so like an adventure game. Yeah, but like a, a much easier adventure game. Okay. Or worst case scenario, I can stream it instead. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's it's pretty good. Like, um. Okay, is it, like, computer then, or what platform? Yeah, it's on, I got it through Twitch. Mmm, okay. Because of the free things of Twitch Prime. Right. Um. Sorry, I'm also playing. Uh, you can, honestly, it's kind of hard to explain. It's just a real fun little, like, you can walk up to things to interact with them. Hmm. Uh, trying to think, like, what... <sighs> I'm, I'm struggling now, like, um, uh, you know, I can't play it at the same time. Uh, it's... Yeah, I'm, I'm trying. Yeah, so, the premise of the game is, uh, this little girl and her brother are hiding in a bunker during a bomb, a bombing raid. And he's telling her a story that's basically a dream he had that she really likes about a clown named Sadwick in the Kingdom of Silence. Hmm. And uh, all she, you know, they go over the main beats of the story, and then he, they get bombed. Oh no! And when he wakes up, they're in the silence. Oh. And, yeah. And so they're trying to get back home, and that's the premise of the game. And very Wizard of Oz, uh, mm -hmm. plays it very well. Gorgeous art style. Um, I've gotten it as a free game. I don't know how much it would cost on Twitch, but right, can't. Uh, I think I actually might have gotten it this month. Oh, uh, yeah, if it was a recent, I might have gotten it, or I could get it, because I do have Twitch Prime. Um, I'm dropping 
pitch this, kick this fucking witch ass. Let's see, when did, because I can just check from here and see. Wait a minute, I should have more, thinking about it, I gotta run back to Mayhem Temple and see if I actually have the, um, do, did I actually turn on the egg cheat or not? Oh, and I have enough to get another cheat as well. Shit, I'm gonna go do that real quick before I finish this off. I will point out that uh, Dream Daddy is one of this one's free games. Oh, cool. I, th I might already have it from a Humble Bundle or something, but I will, yeah. The other game I was talking about, Observer, is also one of this one's free games. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah, I might do some one-off stuff. Um, after Matrix. I finish up Tui and then move on to Paper Mario before too how, long. Let me see how much it is on Steam, because I think it probably won't show me the price since I already own the game on right. Twitch. Uh, silence. Oh, you know, I never even entered the eggs cheat into the Mayhem Temple now that I think about it. I gotta go back there and do that, especially for this last fight. I'm gonna need way more fucking grenade eggs. Uh, for what it's worth on Steam, Silence is going for 14 bucks right now. That's not bad. It, it's a good game. I like it a lot. Uh, I tried Observer, which is yeah. one of this month's other free games. Mm -hmm. Um... Did, I, did you pause your stream, or oh, did, fuck, did I it go pause? out again? No, it's, it, it's going on this end. Oh, now it is. Mm. It, it, it that seems to happen like every other day. It was frozen on my end at like the screen saying Cauldron Keep. Right. Um, yeah, Silence, fun game. Would hmm. recommend. Um, I've got so many fucking yeah. games on here. Oh, I wonder if it's because I went clicking around looking at my games. Mm. But I've got like so many fucking launchers. I hate it. I I, I don't like that. At yeah, all. I like to keep it consolidated. I've got Steam, GOG, Galaxy, Epic Games, Twitch, uh, you play. Uh, it's too many. It's just too many. You know what I'm really mad about? I have a game from when I was a teenager that people used to hack a lot to like give you easier time with weapons or armor or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I can't find a single like hack or mod or anything that gives me that. Mm. Every mod makes the game harder. Yeah. I'm like, <sighs> I get that people who've mastered the game want a challenge, mm -hmm. but some of us just want to fucking make it easy. It. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can't find a single, like, fucking hack for it or mod or anything. Mm -hmm. Holy shit. What? Uh, video of people just having dinner while fireworks are exploding outside their window. Jesus. And I'm talking, like, just, they're just chilling, like, wow. no, nah, this is normal. Holy shit. Looks like maybe a nursing home or something. Right. And fireworks are just exploding outside the window. Damn. Like, they are at the point where the fireworks are going off. It's just, it's so unnecessary. Fuck. Oh, wait, I got it. Never mind. God. But apparently, uh, all these protests are putting a drain on the cops' uh, finances, so... Good. Keep it up! Yeah. Keep it up. Do it enough so that eventually they just pull their funding entirely. That's the goal. Yeah. Fuck the police. Oh, man, wait. Uh, people, who, people who have no respect for the police, do something to earn it. Like, respect is earned. Yup. 
is a privilege, not a right. Yep. You'd think if anyone knew about privilege, the fucking cops would. Do I want to? Mm. Cause I know that the the last cheat is homing eggs, which would make this last fight a lot easier. But like the amount of time it would take to go get everything, uh, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try a few more times. I think I should be able to get the uh, this final boss. And if I'm not able to this time, then next next stream I will go and get that last cheat. On the subject of cheats, Andrew, what are some of your favorite cheats from from the good old days of cheat codes? Oh man, there are some good ones. Mm. You know what video game uh, really leaned into the cheats and had fun with it? Uh, which? Like you could argue that Saints Row 4 did, but mm. they they were already a comedy game. Yeah. So, like, leaning into the silly cheats is, uh, the one that I think really killed, killed it with the cheats was Spider-Man 2 for the PS1. Yeah? Uh, it gave you customizable costumes, mm. it gave you just so much stuff you could do, and it's so much better. I fucking love it. Um, I part of it is I had my own Spider-Man costume design that I liked. Mm. Uh, and this game allowed you to basically create your edition of it. Oh shit! Oh my god, uh, somebody got a bucket of KFC and found a vape pen inside. The oh bag no. was sealed so it wasn't the DoorDash driver. Ooh. Well, there's like somebody's Jolly pocket. Being. Driving there right now, I'm disgusted. I went to the location, although I DoorDash because their phone lines were busy. Talked to the manager, they assured me it wasn't them, it was the DoorDash driver. I explained the bags of food were sealed with their tape, all grouped together by food type and sealed in plastic bags and put into a paper bag, or a bigger bag, showed them that there was no way it was the DoorDash driver. Uh, if it was, uh, that a vape pen would fit into the seam or steam holes in, on the chicken bucket lid. They then kept trying to convince me it was DoorDash. They remade my chicken and I left the crust of vape pen in the, there and DoorDash gave me $12 in credit off the $50 order. I just want to know which... Uh, person was vaping while making my food. Come on, bro. To end this story, B would like to remind you that Black Lives Matter, defund the police, abolish ice. And, like, there is a picture of the pen, like, just sitting in their bucket of chicken. That's disgusting. Best case scenario, it was in, like, their shirt pocket and fell out, which that's still fully contaminated. Um, but... Worst case scenario, if they were vaping, they're just spewing corona, like, particles everywhere. And one thing that got me was, have you seen, do you follow Kelly Turnbull? Maybe? Uh, Seal of Squid? Uh, no, I don't think so. I discovered her through her comic, uh, Manly Guys Doing Manly Things. Mm. Um... Which she has enough to do with mom. I think she's just burnt out on her never coming back, and that breaks my heart because that was really good. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the website for that comic is the punchline is machismo.com. Um. Yeah, she's not updated in two years. Um. Like, almost to the date, June 11th, yeah. Uh. Wow. Uh, she tweeted today about, uh, uh, Captain America and Arnold Schwarzenegger and Rob Liefeld. You know the famous, uh, Liefeld Captain America drawing, right? Yeah, with the, the huge bust. But it's like, 
you see the front of his chest despite the fact he's turned so that you would only be able to really see him from one angle. Yeah. Uh, she did a thing about um, showing pictures of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Say, you know, this isn't an impossible shot. It would but just not be natural. Well, no, it's that. Uh, out of curiosity, you should see people's so I tried to recreate uh, or no, okay. If you want a great example of how references don't really help unless you break them down to understand what you're looking at and why things look the way they do, consider that the infamous Rob Liefeld cap was pretty clearly directly ref from uh, Pumping Iron Era Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm. So there's three pictures of Schwarzenegger that look very, very similar to uh, that picture of Captain America. Yep. Yeah, I mean, like, very similar. But the problem is, he's got his hips turned away from you. His upper body turned slightly towards you. And he's also got his uh, right hand, which is facing you, kind of down where the wrist is at his ribs. And his left hand is grabbing his right wrist, so it's pushing his chest even further towards you. Yeah. Captain America is standing with his arms straight down at his sides, and his hips are pointing forward instead of away from you. Mm. And so she even went so far as to fix the picture and show why he wouldn't look that way, etc., etc. And took a live model, uh, which is a uh, anatomy model. She took an anatomy model and posed it as best she could to get that look of Captain America while it could still stand. Mm -hmm. And it is the most ridiculous, silly, unrealistic, Looking pose, I have to send you and Coco a friend because it's oh, totally. wonderful. It's a wonderful like explanation of why this doesn't work. And she actually makes Liefeld work look decent. And like as Maddie pointed out, even with it properly fixed, his head is tiny and way too far back. Yeah, proportionally, like it doesn't matter what the pose was. Uh, the anatomy model has some serious anatomy. They come in several varieties of jacked man. Jesus Christ. But yeah, like... <sighs> it, it's just... Really... It really shows that, uh... Weifeld is bad and... I hate his work. I, I've never, like, read anything he's done and been like... I'm glad I put that in my eyes, like... Yeah? I, I just can't, like... No, 
purposes, no. Well, well I'm gonna throw up. Oh no. Hidden Valley Ranch tweeted, Goodbye, ketchup. Hello, Tangy Restaurant inspired HBR secret sauce. Mm, and there's a video. There's a video. And all I see is a burger dripping brown cum off of something. It looks like they crossed maybe a uh, beet with uh, onion. I don't know what that's supposed to be. Maybe it's supposed to be bacon. It doesn't look like food. Uh, it doesn't sound like bur food. Burgers, new bestie. I have to watch. I'll do it so you don't have to. Oh, oh it's so much worse than I thought it would be. Uh, you know what? If I have to see it so you, I take it back. It's going to the group. Alright, alright. I almost feel like you should share it on the stream. I do not have a way to set up to do that. I. It sounds like an excuse. I, I mean, I could, but it would be like a bunch of fucking work. I mean, it saved me from getting rickled in the past, so it was a good shield against against the evils of the internet. Oh yeah, did you hear recently Rick Astley got rickrolled by Reddit? No, I did not. Go on Reddit. Well, I didn't actually see it on Reddit. I saw it on, uh, what was it, the Hollywood Examiner, I think. Like, had an article about it. And I just needed the headline, because what, what more is there to say? Got okay. Did you know he's actually a really good musician outside of, like, the, like, meme he became? Oh, yeah, that's one of his much weaker, like, songs. Like, he's covered other people's songs, like Bruno Mars, uh, he did a Bruno Mars cover, and it made Bruno Mars sound like the cover. Wow. Like, he's that damn good. Uh, I'm trying to remember the song he did. Um, the one... Da, 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 Michelle Pfeiffer, that white gold. Oh, uh, 24 Karat Man. No, 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 uh, uh Uptown Funk? Yeah, Uptown Funk. Yeah. He did a cover of that and made it sound like the original, and Bruno Mars was covering him. Hmm. Okay, I'm at a much better pace now, so I might actually be able to do it this time. Jesus Christ. Oh boy. I hate, like, just people in general. Yeah. Yeah, just in general. Uh, I don't know why I go on Twitter. I hate it. It does nothing for my mental health. Bad, bad scene, dude. Yeah, it really is. You're coming up on your two hours. Mm -hmm. I'm probably gonna finish up this and then, uh. Yeah, I'm gonna finish up this specific attempt. Are you, uh, are, you gonna, are you gonna win? Is it you winning? I think I'm gonna win. And if not, I'm gonna do it tomorrow. Because I'll be able to focus the whole stream on it. Come on. Bitch. Gruntilda, you son of a bitch! Better America. Although they, they treat their natives just as good. Uh, 
good marginally better, apparently. They got healthcare and weed, that's about it all they got It doesn't take much to be better America, let me tell you. I mean, they're, they've got some problems with reason. Oh, it's, sure. Not I mean, really, it's... What kind Canada of hides in kind? bed. Canada hides in bed, pointing out how the USA is worse. Yeah. I think they, I think he, he meant, uh, hides its bed. Or I think he hides it by... Yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah, I was right, haha. <laughs> Creative people try to work. Uh, have you ever heard Steven Lynch do the, uh, what if the guy from Smashing Pumpkins lost his car keys? Uh, <laughs> I have not. I mean, he was definitely in that, like, Dane Cook era of stand-up where yeah. there was a lot of fratty sh shit. Yeah, that's how I would describe him. Very fratty. Um, like, he had a song about, uh, oh, what was it called? One where he, uh, discusses it, he would prefer dating black girls. Uh, God, what the fuck was that one called? Uh, I think it was called, like, Vanilla Ice Cream or something. Mm. I can't remember. Like, he has some stuff that you wouldn't want to share with friends, you know? Oh, certainly. Yeah, you, you, you just keep, like, maybe skip those tracks. Yeah. I mean, early Bo Burnham had a lot of the same stuff, too, but he definitely, like, evolved past that. Considering yeah. he started out when he was, like, 17. Has something of an excuse. Didn't he do the song where everyone accuses him of being gay? Yeah, but he did, like he wrote that when he was like 15. So. Yeah, but like, look, my favorite line in that is just even my boyfriend thinks I'm gay. <laughs> yeah. New Crash Bandicoot game gets trailer premiere date. Why are we fucking teasing trailers at this point, people? For fucking sake, wait for the actual like information. Get excited. God damn it. Yeah, I bet you the game's not even done. Uh, no, certainly not. So that goes back to our comment yesterday of uh, shit the fuck up. Yeah. The time to tweet about it is when the game is finished. Mm-hmm. If right. you are not finished, then up the fuck shit. Alright, I'm gonna have to go on a on a fucking adventure for some more Cheeto pages so I can get those homing eggs next time, but that's it for tonight. I'm bisexual problems one over two are the biggest problem bisexuals face is deciding whether we want hot dogs for dinner or tacos. <laughs> that's still my favorite gif. Of the girl, like, holding one of each and, like, going back and forth between, like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> like, that is, that sums it up so, like, that, mm. Yep. Well, it's just not a real language, it's a long-running joke people keep falling for. <laughs> <laughs> I can believe it. No, sure. But, Alright, All right. thank you to everyone who's watching, thanks to anybody who watched before, thanks to anybody who watches in the future on the past broadcast tab or on the Twitch archive, which you can find linked below on the browser version. You can also find my personal YouTube and my Twitter, where I'll tweet out whenever I'm going live, which is about 9 to 11 Eastern Daylight Time daily. 
um, yeah, we're gonna finish this up on the next stream, then probably move on to some one-offs for a while, probably some of the ones that Andrew, Andrew, uh, recommended, and then Paper Mario after that, starting with the original on the N64. Uh, please follow if you haven't, I'd really appreciate it, definitely helps, and please come back to watch again in the future. Any last words, Andrew? My baloney has a first name, but he won't tell me what it is. What is he hiding? Little fucking processed prick. Alright, good night, everybody. Night. <laughs>